Welcome to Who Charted. My name is Manish Kata. With me, as always, is Dan Russo. We got six charts in six minutes. Let's get after it. Getting after it means starting with the 10-year Treasury notes. This is the price, not the yield. Uh, knocking on the door of a breakout, but not there yet. Everybody's getting excited about the rally uh, in 10-year Treasury notes and therefore the decline in yields. However, um, I think that is a little bit premature. We're not out yet. We've been in print saying 134 is the level to watch. Knocking on that door a few times, can't get out. Momentum not really giving us much of a tell. Stuck in the middle of the range, not overbought, oversold. Uh, I think before you can get super excited about being bullish on uh, treasuries, uh, the 10-year note has to be above 134. Not there yet, still knocking on the door of the 2020 lows, but not out yet. It's a little premature to be super bullish on treasury notes here, in my opinion. I got Dow Jones Transports and S&P 500. I'm old school when it comes to these divergences. I know a lot of people like using semiconductors these days. I still think transports is a better leading indicator. You can test it all the way back to the 1900s, one of the first indices created. And as you can see, it, it made a high in May and then has been diverging from the S&P 500 since. It is my opinion that a strong bull market that will continue in the future uh, must be accompanied by transports and not diverging. So this is something that we want to keep an eye on. It could obviously correct itself in no time or the divergence could continue to widen. Uh, I would be more concerned if uh, this pattern continues into the future. I think that's fair enough. Small caps uh, relative to the S&P 500 is another chart that I brought uh, because it's kind of contingent on the previous chart of yields. It kind of plays in with the, uh, with the transports as well. Uh, small caps are essentially part of the whole value rotation and they started to lead uh, really back in November around the vaccine news, kind of got above the 200 day moving average and we're nice leadership, but they've really been going sideways since March relative to the S&P 500. Now we've backed off to the point where we're testing a rising 200 day moving average while at the same time momentum on the RSI is breaking down. So if small caps are going to continue to lead, this is the spot from which they're going to do it. Now I think they're going to probably have some trouble here. Because uh, even if they do bounce from the 200 day moving average, there is a lot of resistance uh, now overhead that they will have to overcome. And at the same time, if that 10 year note breaks out and yields continue lower, uh, small caps are going to have a tough time being leadership. But if they're going to make a make a go at it, this is the spot. I'm not there yet, though. All right. On the top, I have the S&P 500 on the bottom. I have a uh, proprietary 21 day breath indicator. Nothing complicated, but it turns breath into a ratio. Look, when markets decline and breath declines, great, right? That seems to be intuitive. You have decline in assets and you have uh, more stocks making uh, declining as well, right? And you can see back in November of last year, the market declined and the breath indicator went negative. The difference today is you have markets at all time highs uh, and the breath indicator just went negative. Another way to look at divergence that's uh, going on underneath the market. It doesn't mean that this can't get corrected real soon with a with a rally to the upside and and breath improves. But it's something that's caught our attention that this 21 day indicator went negative recently, while at the same time, the S&P 500 made a new high. There's a million ways to look at divergences. This is something that that caught our attention recently. All right, my last chart is S&P 500 tech, hardware and equipment. Everybody loves to talk about software, right? The phrase is software is eating the world. Mark Andreessen made it famous uh, years ago. Software companies are exciting. Software companies are sexy. Uh, but I think sometimes people forget that all that software does run on hardware. And with the exception of Apple, no one really talks about the hardware names in the market. But take a look what's happening to the S&P 500 hardware and equipment index. Nice breakout. Uh, above uh, prior highs and making the turn on a relative basis, actually starting to take a leadership position both on an absolute and relative basis. Uh, hardware is above 50 day moving averages that are beginning to ever so slightly turn higher. So absolute breakout and the potential um, shift in leadership uh, for an area of the technology landscape that no one really talks about with the exception of one name. Everybody's looking over here at the, uh, at the shiny software stocks, but uh, hardware uh, probably shouldn't be ignored at that point. That's my third chart uh, of the show. So the S&P 1500 new low. So the S&P 1500 is basically the S&P 500 plus the S&P 600 small caps and the S&P 400 mid caps. 
This is a very bifurcated market when it comes to the actual market and the internals. And what I mean by that is you can point to divergences in breadth in transports, but at the same time, there are zero new lows. Uh, not just in this index, but also in the NYSE, they're very low numbers. So mathematically, how can you get really scared of a market or a market correction when there simply are not new lows being made whatsoever? And so that, that's the song and dance that we have to play with. There's obviously divergences, but nothing is screaming at us from this aspect in terms of new lows. So, you know, how worried can you really be? And so with that being said, thank you very much for joining us. Six charts, six minutes. Like, subscribe, smash that like button. Uh, we have to catch up to industry gossip in terms of views and uh, do your part. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.